Thank you so much. My name is Mary Zamani and I'm a master's student in the Comparative Studies Department at University of Dusseldorf. This tool of clothes everywhere is a, st a study of fashion and clothing from a human animal perspective, reflects my research on studying how to be human via a philosophy of fashion approach. In this presentation, I will be discussing fashion and clothing in and how to be human from a human animal perspective. I will be using Derrida's animal gaze, nakedness and nudity. I will be discussing the dressing and pieces of clothes that are given to Mary by the fox as gifts, according to philosophy of fashion. But what do I really mean by the term human animal? This is a term down the barriers between species. Professor Dr. Baumlin describes the human animal perspective um, as this. If the future rests in our recognition of interspecies dependency, then developing empathetic, caring relationships with other animals will be vital to our own survival. Derrida focuses on nudity and emphasizes that human beings conceptualize animals as other. Derrida questioned the idea of embarrassment when he was caught naked before his cast gaze. Additionally, Derrida says, from that point on, naked, without knowing it, animals would not in truth be naked. They wouldn't be naked because they are naked in principle. But the, the, with the exception of man, no animal has ever thought to dress itself. Derrida is playing with the psychology of the gaze, which traditionally belongs to humans and particularly to men. The gaze becomes a form of symbolic um, position and control over another's body as an object of desire. Clothing serves to conceal the body, gaze. but it can also be used to enhance the gaze's desire of the person being seen. In other words, the naked human body is still present underneath clothes and subject us to fantasy. The sexual expression of most non-human animals is regulated by the seasonal changes in hormones, whereas humans are capable of arousal at any time by sight. Derrida's embarrassment at being seen when naked by a cat leads him to reflect on our human self-consciousness when he was objected, when we objectify our own existence by accepting the role of the one being seen. In the animal world, nakedness is a human construct since the skin of animals need no covering. It is suited to their habitats, providing adequate warmth, protection, etc. The human being, in contrast, needs clothing for, for warmth and protection. Clothing, therefore, is, cultural, is a cultural extension of the human body whose condition is to be either clothed or naked. Naked, therefore, enters into a dialectic with clothed, where in the human realm, one term necessitates the other. Without the concept of clothing, humanity would have no concept of nakedness. For that reason, the, ex the existence of clothing creates the experience of nakedness. This is a study of Derrida's concept of the construction of dichotomous structure of language, namely human and animal, body and soul, to connect these concepts with the philosophical fashion theories conducted by Roman Meinhold. Moreover, Paolo Cocoso's debut novel, How to be Human, represents a human-female character's relationship with a fox character. This paper studies their human animal interactions by comparing and contrasting pieces of clothes um, throughout the novel with reference to Derrida's conce concept of nudity, the animal gaze, and a brief loss of fashion. How to be human recounts the story of Mary, a woman in her in early 30s, living in Hackney, as she navigates the world after the breakdown of an intense and controlling relationship with Mark, her ex-boyfriend. The novel begins by give, giving the reader an insight into Mary's mundane routine. Now, it seems, consists mostly of a dull job, an irritating boss, a mother conspicuous only in her absence with an endless expanse of eventless days stretching out before her. Mary um, seeks to consolidate relationships elsewhere. Mary meets a fox character, fox friend, whom everyone in the neighborhood despises, except Mary. 
The fox's gaze, with Mary's curiosity about the fox, resembles the famous gaze of Derrida's cat gaze or animal gaze. Mary grows fond of the fox, in particular, that she gradually narrows down to connect with the outside world, an outside mundane world she used to abhor. By the end of the chapter two, Mary becomes convinced that the fox is leaving gifts for her. Surprisingly, the gifts are pieces of clothes. I have made two columns in order to focus on Mary and the fox, in contrast to Mary and Mark, where you can see the differentiation from human animal perspective. The first piece of clothes the fox gives Mary, for example, is a pair of blue boxers. Mark's clothing description short, chair, deck shoes, no socks. The fox brings her a soft leather gardening glove. The fox's clothing gifts can be also dealt with Mark's new outfit to impress Mary with. Fox's repulsive odor is again in contrast with Mark's um, boss perfume or cologne, sorry. So, according to Bouvier, one could relate the second gift of the fox to a second skin. A second skin is a term coined by Buddha to refer to each and every concealment of human and non-human bodies, ranging from makeup to cover um, up the, the um, signs of age. To conclude, the fox's surprising gift could be a message to rejuvenate Mary, who is constantly um, hindering the aging process. Baudelaire is against Aristotle's view, which says art is an imitation of nature. Baudelaire is, hang, uh, is hands against Aristotle's view, which says art is an, like against naturalness. Okay. Mary's character is definitely traumatized, and the fox helps her to recover a capacity for caring that is not threatened by the harm and dangers that the humans, especially male characters, might pose in her world. Therefore, she refuses to follow up the old relationship with Mark. She recognizes that nothing about Mark, not, if, not even his outfit, his posture, not the slant of his body on the pavement gave any clue to his reappearance. Her projection of human thoughts and intentions onto the fox are attempts to interpret the animal's gifts of human clothing. Clothing being one of the material distinctions between humans and animals as Bouliard suggests. She understands the animal in human terms, within human habits of perception. At its heart, the novel is an unsettling look into loneliness, human connection, and boundary between civilization and wilderness, which is highlighted by the Fox character. The narrative leads the reader to sense that the world described through Mary's eyes is not the real world. These themes are supported all through the story by Mary's purposeful exploration in finding meaningful human animal stories outside the fox character. The fox seems to sympathize Mary's deep obsession and reflects into the fox um, and he reflects to them by offering her gifts as uh, he steals from the neighbors. Once a glove, the second time a piece of underwear. The neighbors demand to poison foxes because they steal food or clothes regardless of the fact that man, man as the, is the only one to have invented the garment to cover his sex. Therefore, the foxes do not necessarily sleep, steal objects for personal use. Sometimes they want to give them to their other human friends because there is no nudity in nature, as Dorita says. They wouldn't be naked because they are naked. In principle, with the exception of man, no animal has ever thought to dress itself. According to Singh, to think, a human being is an act of nature, desires to be recognized by the other person. He makes use of methods such as the clothing or disguising of his outer appearance in order to present himself as desirable. All characters in the book are presented as difficult to understand and empathize with because that is how they appear to Mary. Their actions are often seem, um, often seem hyperbolic, random, and unmotivated. Hence, the trouble Mary is experiencing forging relationships 
unlike her seemingly authentic relationship with the fox figure, who displayed immortality. The, the relationships she has had in the past are given equally little attention, especially the relationship with Mark, whose bus perfume couldn't be taken down by the fox's strong odor, which displays durability. Neither of the relationships are fully explored in the novel because the narrator's core goal is to deconstruct the fox with Mary's world, which represents the human-animal relationships. Throughout the novel, there seems to be a line between the concept of nudity and the pieces of cloth that the fox leaves in Mary's garden. The garden, which is the last setting Mary is left alone at the end of the novel. Hence, Gerida says, from that point on, naked without knowing it, animals would not, in truth, be naked. Contrary to animals, man is a self-staging, self-reflecting, and imitating being who is perpetually seeking for recognition and immortality. Fashion and clothing for mankind serve as a requisite that influence how they are perceived daily by other spectators. Kant assumed that a person likes to imitate his superiors and that fashion is a manifestation of this imitation. In this respect, Aristotle's catharsis theory, which he explained in his Poetics, offers definition for tragedy. Therefore, tragedy is defined as an imitation of an action that, with incidents arousing pity and fear, wherewith to accomplish its catharsis of such emotions. Tragedy is an imitation of men, but of an action and of life. And life consists in action, and its end is a mode of action, not a quality. Now, character de determines men's qualities, but it is by their actions that they are happy or the reverse. Hence, Aristotle assumed a steady understanding and pleasure is, is bestowed upon tragic catharsis. This tragic catharsis is accountable to fashion and clothing when a person in real life perceives fashion as an aesthetic pleasure, but not only an aesthetic necessity. This is what is being neglected in the modernist approach in producing fashion and clothing, and the fox in how to be humans urged to be empathized by Mary. Mary had grasped Chiori's haute couture fashion collection for autumn winter 2020 21 is presented by the following doctrine, which signifies the philosophical shimmer of liberation. This assumes the phenomena of immortality and how fashion lends its wearers a touch of immortality. It is entirely in favor of persevering nature, animals, and humans because it is the muses in the jungle, all as united, magical, and mystical, who need outfits. This is how she introduces her fashion collection. I have uploaded the video actually, but um, it cannot be seen here. But later, when I upload the slides, you can also watch the video too, so because it's very interesting. Surrealistic images manage to make the invisible visible. I am interested in mysticism and magic because, among other things, this can banish the uncertainty of the future from my head, says Chiori about her couture collection. As a matter of fact, due to Maria Gracia, quote, one could assume a shimmer of duration or immortality, a permanent um, supra-historical phenomena in fashion, which would never fade away. By changing fashion styles and new outfits, one could persevere in durability. Therefore, a feeling of catharsis is released by new appearances. Fashion has been regarded to bestow its wearers a new aura, or an outward from form of look, which is defined as the ideal typical incarnation of a person wearing a certain outfit. How to be human ends with these two sentences. He crossed the wind so no one would follow. The Riddle's title of conference, The Animal That Therefore I Am, More to Follow, follows the same deconstruction concept of questioning the otherness of the animals and humans. There are two major questions to be pondered about. First, Mary hasn't clearly learned how to be an animal, but by caring for the fox, has she learned how to be human? To draw on my argument, 
the human-animal relationship between the fox and Mary could lead to healing on both sides. Mary, by dramatizing the nature of the fox in nakedness, and fox by bringing different clothing gifts. Therefore, the interspecies dependency is recognized by developing empathetic, caring relationships with other animals will be vital to our own survival. In conclusion, Paulo Colo's How to be Human, by, by referring to the uh, clothing pieces that uh, the fox um, character leaves in her garden and the narrative references to clothes, it could be said that uh, she is successful in determining the humankind's healing, which is in finding immortality, durability, which is resulted by persevering meaningful human-animal interactions. So um, I have also put some work cited and image credits. That's all. <laughs>